What's up, Cal Gang? All right, so we got this um, we got this truss here, and it wants us to find the force in members BC, CF, and EF. So these three ones with the green circle on them, those are the ones that we want to find the force in. So let's go ahead and do it, right? So in order to do this problem, there's a couple ways you could do it. So the first way you could do it is you could start here, and you could find the force in here, and then the force in here, and then the force in here, and you could work your way over. And that would be fine, and it would take a little bit of time. But what if we don't have time for that? What's, uh, that's what I'm saying. What if we don't have time for that? So what we can do instead is we can make an imaginary cut. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a cut right here. We're gonna cut off everything on this side, and then we're gonna solve from there. And it's gonna make it a lot easier. I'm gonna show you why it's gonna be a lot easier. So let's redraw this with this new cut that we imagined. So bringing this down, this is E, this is C, this is D, it's connected, and then what happens now is this truck or this this um, this beam it turns into a force that just points outward. So we're assuming tension on this, and this becomes force BC, right? It already has this force here, but instead it's just this tension force pulling this way. So then CF becomes this. CF, and then FE becomes this. So now instead of all of this, we just have these three forces showing tension. That's what we basically recreated it as. And of course, we have to redraw these forces. We know that this is 600 feet, or 600 pounds, excuse me. This is 600 pounds. And there you go. So that's all the forces acting on the system. So basically what we've just created now is the force body diagram. So basically we can say that this internal force does not matter, this internal force doesn't matter, this doesn't matter. We could actually just say all these forces are now what we're looking at, and we can basically do the same thing as usual with moments, some of the forces Y, some of the forces X, as long as we stay contained in this. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's make sure remember that this is four feet, this is four feet, and then the ratio of this triangle is four, or square root of 36, or 32. So you can just do that with Pythagoras theorem. I'm gonna guess that you guys know how to do that already. So yeah, we can keep going now. So how should we go about finding this? So what about some of the forces in the y direction? That's one thing we can do. So if we do some of the forces in the y, you're gonna see that this 600 is in it, this 600, oh, this is 800. Let's see, I'm making mistakes out here. 800, right? So the 600 and the 800 will be pushing down. BC and FE are pushing sideways, so we don't have to worry about those and Y. This pushes upward, so yeah, this is gonna be into some of the forces Y. But then you might ask yourself, well, what about CE, what about DE? Well, these are internal forces, and that means that we're not gonna concern with them. Because what that means is that if ED, if E pushes this way, then D pushes back this way at the same amount. So it ends up not making a difference. So let's go ahead and do some of the forces in the Y. We know it's equal to zero, of course, so then we have negative 600 minus 800 plus FCF, and then of course it's gonna be cosine. So then you can either say cosine of 45, that's what I'm gonna do. Because we know that this is a 45 degree angle. Or you can use sine of 45, they're the same thing. So of course we're gonna move these two over and then divide by cosine 45, so it'll look like FCF is equal to 600 plus A1400 over cosine of 45. And then you're gonna get FCF is equal to 1980 pounds, and it's in tension. So when we assume that everything's in tension, right? We assume that this is a tension force, this is a tension force, and this is a tension force. We basically, if we get a positive number, then that means it is tension. If we get a negative number, that means it's compression. So in this case, we got a positive number, we know it's tension. Nice, so let's go ahead and solve for the other forces. So, well, one thing we can do, right? We know that if we take a moment at a point, then the forces are not in a moment. So one thing we can do is if we take the moment at C, right, then these forces are just not here anymore then the only forces we consider are the 800 and Fe. So let's do that. Let's take the sum of the moments at C. We know that the sum of the moments at C is gonna be equal to zero. And then of course, let's add them up. So at C, these are all 
not going to be concerning ourselves because they're on C. So then we have D. So we know that this push is 800 down, and it's going clockwise, right? So that's going to be a minus 800 times the distance of 4. We know that that's 4 meters, or 4 feet, excuse me. And then we have this. So this pushes this way, which is going to make it want to rotate counterclockwise, which is going to be a positive number. So you're going to be adding Fe, force Fe, times its distance away, which is 4 feet vertical. So this is easy math, of course. Then you can just find that F force Fe is equal to 800 feet tension, or 800 pounds tension. Right, because we found it's going to be a positive number if we add that over. There you go. So then, now all we have to do is do one more thing. So we can do some of the forces x, or you can find the moments. Either one's going to work. I'm going to do some of the forces in the x. Some of the forces in the x. We know it's going to be equal to zero. So let's add them up. So we have negative F, Fe minus Fcf. Sit down for this one. So FCF only acts at a cosine 45 degree angle, right? Because it only acts so much that way. Then we're going to subtract FBC, and then that's it, right? I think so. Yep, so that's it. So then, of course, we're looking for BC, so it's going to be FBC is equal to negative force FE, which we said is 800. Minus FCF, 1980, cosine of 45. So if you do the math on this, you get FBC is equal to negative 2,200 pounds. And it's because we found it's a negative number, or like I said, it's going to be compression. Negative number means compression. So there you go. So those are the three answers to this problem. That's how you do it. So it's not too tricky of a problem, really but it's knowing how to make the right cut. So the goal of the cut is to end up with as many forces on that cut as possible, just like this. This is our three forces we're looking for, and we made the cut, so we find the three forces. So there you go, if you have any more statics problems, I have a whole series on statics, and um, yeah. I'll see you next time, guys, peace.